Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well this morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the questions that you guys requested from me uh, that I go over. And actually, I'm going to separate them by category. Uh, and by, by that, I mean by section. So there was a lot of questions from 10.5, so I think that's the first thing that I actually want to go over first. Um, so I highlighted a few of the questions that you guys would like me to go over. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best to give you as most descriptive of uh, an explanation as I can. So hopefully you guys can better understand that um, in the future. So uh, let's see, 10.5, we are doing 3B was the first one that came up. So let's go ahead and tackle 3B. So you're given that DE is a tangent. DE is a tangent at E, okay? And it, we know it's a tangent because it touched the circle in exactly one point. And then EF, so let's go ahead and draw EF here. So EF right here, this arc is actually 150 degrees. The arc EF measures 150 degrees. Now the question is, what is the measure of angle DEF? So let's first trace out where that angle is, guys, and that angle is right here. DEF is right there, that, uh, that angle created with my uh, green marker. Now, the angle that I'm looking for is this angle right here. Well, guys, here's the thing. This is actually called a tangent chord angle, okay? That's a tangent, that's a chord, it's a tangent chord angle. But what's most important here, guys, if you look closely, this is going to work kind of like an inscribed angle because, look, the vertex of that angle is on the edge of the circle. Or on the actual circle, okay? So, because it's there, then I actually could treat it in the very same way that I would find an inscribed angle. Now, remember, guys, inscribed angles are going to be exactly half the size of the intercepted arc. So, very similar here with my tangent chord angle, guys. So, this angle right here, what would it be? It would be one half of 150, which in this case would be 75 degrees. Okay, so that is how I found the answer to the 75 on problem 3B. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, let's see, nothing here, nothing here. Uh, oh, looks like 6B was a question. And actually, guys, this is going to work almost in the exact same way. This is still a tangent. Why? Because it touched at exactly one point on the circle. This is a chord, and you are looking for this angle, X, right here. Well, if I want to find that angle, again, a tangent chord angle, we find very similarly to how we would find a uh, an inscribed angle, and that is by looking at half of the intercepted arc. So this is looking right here at 136. Uh, let's see, 136 divided by 60 would be 68. So x equals 68 degrees. So that is how we're getting that, guys. So notice that tangent chord angles work very similar uh, to how inscribed angles work. And you'll know that because, remember guys, in both of those scenarios, the vertex is directly on the circle. Alright, the next one. A circle is divided into three arcs in the ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. A tangent chord angle intercepts the largest of the three arcs. Find the measure of the tangent chord angle. Okay, well, go ahead and try to draw a circle here. I just discovered this tool not long ago, so I'm going to make some use of it okay uh, and we're going to actually divide this circle into three arcs guys of this ratio three to four to five well to do that guys i'm going to actually divide up my central angles the same way because remember guys central angles uh, are going to be always the same as the intercepted arc so what i'm going to actually do i'm going to create uh let's see this looks like a fifth uh sorry my fault. Uh, that looks like the 5x portion. Okay. This looks like a 3x portion. And this looks like a 4x portion. If that doesn't quite make sense, guys, remember. How many parts do you actually have here? That would be a total of 12 parts. So if you want, you could divide this up into um, uh, 12. And then just find 5 12, 3 12, and 4 12. But for now, guys, it really is not going to matter all that much because watch what's about to happen right now. This is 3x. This is 4x. And this is 5x right here. Okay, That one's the bigger one. Okay. So what are we doing then? It says a uh, circle is divided into three arcs in the ratio of 3, 4, 5, which we did. Um, 
a tangent chord angle intercepts the largest of the three arcs. So here we go. The largest of the three arcs, guys, is this one. So I want to create a tangent chord angle that intercepts that piece of arc. And here it is. Well, the chord has to run from here to here. Okay, if I'm going to trap this pink inside, right? And the other portion has to be a tangent line. Okay, that's an angle. That's a tangent chord angle. Tangent chord. Okay, that's a tangent chord angle. Now, well, how are we going to find that, guys? How are we going to find the measure of this angle right here? I'm going to go ahead and call this, uh, I don't know, let's call that angle Z. Why not? Well, guys, here's what we can do. Now, it might not look like we have much information, but we actually have plenty. And here's what it is, guys. Look at this. This is a circle after all, okay? And if we have every single piece of the circle, then we actually have a full 360. What does that mean? That means I have 3x plus 4x plus 5x, and that should all equal 360 degrees. Okay? Well, if that's the case, then that means, uh, let's see, that has, that 12x equals 360 divided by 12 gives you x equals 30. Now, how is that going to be helpful, guys? Well, here is why. If this is x, then I can replace that x in here. 5 times 30 would be 100. And 50 degrees okay that would have to be 150 degrees well guys all this other stuff is irrelevant now now I could just focus on what I really need this is the angle that I want angle Z well angle Z is a tangent chord angle that intersects this pink arc so we have to do one half of that arc so one half of 150 is going to be 75 degrees and that is how we get the answer for problem number 15. And this can be a little confusing, guys. So if you're still a little confused, remember, you always have the ability, now that this is on video, you can actually pause it, rewind a little bit, and rewatch that portion of the video. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and continue. I'm going on to number 20 is the next one that I got uh, questions for. It says, the major arc cut off by two tangents to a circle form an uh, oh, sorry, from an outside point is five-thirds of the minor arc. The major arc cut off by two tangents to a circle from an outside point is five-thirds of whatever the minor arc is. Find the angle formed by the two tangents. Well, first off, let's draw our picture, guys. Again, the picture is what's going to help you here. If you're not drawing pictures, guys, it might get a little confusing. So... The major arc cut off by two tangents from an outside point. So there's some outside points here. I'm going to go ahead and call that A. Now, if I draw my tangent lines, here's one, here's two. Now, that, the fact that I have those two, those two points on the circle, guys, actually divides up the circle into this arc and this arc. Now, you got to read this carefully, guys. Look, the major arc is five-thirds of whatever the minor arc is. So, the major arc is going to be five-thirds of whatever the minor arc is. Why don't we just call that minor arc x for now? Well, from our diagram right now, it looks like this is our x. That looks like the smaller of the arcs. And again, I know we're not really assuming here, guys, because I guarantee you, even if you did it the other way, it would still work out. But for now, let's go ahead and place it there. Because what's important here, guys, is to understand the second part. The major arc has to be 5 thirds of that. So 5 thirds of whatever that was. So 5 thirds of x. Okay. Well, we are looking for the measure of angle A. Find the angle formed by the tangents. We are looking for the measure of angle A. And we'll get there eventually because we have a formula for that. What you guys need to remember right now is this, guys. 5 thirds x plus x, those two arcs make up the whole circle. So what do I know? I know that 5 thirds x plus x has to be the whole circle. It has to be 360. Well, guys, this ju just becomes a matter of understanding. For example, I can't really add a fraction with a whole number, which is a 1 here. 
what I can do is change that 1 into 3 thirds. So 5 thirds x, that didn't change, it was exactly the same. But instead of writing plus 1x, I'm going to write plus 3 thirds x. Why? Because 3 thirds is just 1, guys. These are the same thing. 1 and 3 thirds are the same thing. But at least now I can actually combine those. So that's going to give me 5 thirds x plus 3 thirds x is 8 thirds x equals 360. And now all I got to do to get, up a, get rid of a fraction, guys, take me back all the way to algebra. This is when we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. We can get rid of it all in one step. That cancels that. That cancels that, leaving me x equals, and let's do that on the calculator. So here we go. 360 times um, 3 divided by 8. So 3 8. This is what we get. 135. 130. Okay, well guys, before we even move any further, let's make sure that even makes sense. If x is 135, then this is 135. Well, 135 times 5 thirds, let's do that. 135 times 5 thirds, whoops, 5 thirds is 225. So this is no longer 5 thirds x. This is 225, 225. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, guys, because what's 225 plus 135? That's 360. So we're on the right track here, at least for now. But that actually is was only half the story. We still have to find the measure of angle A. So we still got to do some work, guys. Now remember, this is an angle outside of the circle. So the measure of angle A is big arc minus little arc divided by 2. Well, we have a big and a small arc. So the measure of angle A is 225 minus 135 divided by 2. So the measure of angle A, let's see, 225 minus 135 is 90. 90 divided by 2 would be uh, 45. Okay. And I think in my previous, uh, in my answer key, the one that I uploaded, I think I believe I told you guys that this angle was called T instead, but again, the letter that you use there is irrelevant because you're still finding the measure of the angle outside of the circle, okay? So the angle formed by the two tangents, tangent number one, tangent number two, so this is the angle that we are talking about. So good job, guys. So measure of angle A in this case is 45 degrees. Cool. All right, let me mark that thing as already completed. And then the next one that I saw that you guys were asking about was actually 21 got a lot of attention here. I, ha I had questions for B, C, as well as D. So let's handle B first, guys. Now, first thing that you guys need to remember, and this is something that we haven't talked about in a while, but you do need to remember it, guys. The measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So this is also 40 degrees. Okay, just be careful, guys. That has to be 40 degrees. Now, here's another thing that's super important, guys, and that is this. You need to remember that if chords are congruent, okay, then their corresponding arcs, which is this one and this one, these have to be congruent. Don't forget that, guys. That's super duper important. If, uh, and we remember when we talked about those six theorems, guys, two congruent chords, right? That tell me that I have two congruent central angles. That tells me that I have two congruent arcs. Or in any way, shape, or form you want to uh, play with those theorems, guys. But that's right. If two chords are congruent, then their corresponding arcs have to be congruent. Well, how is that helpful, Mr. Dorado? Well, it's helpful because of this. You know this... And this has to be the same. Well, those two arcs together with this 40 make up the full circle. So why don't I call this x and x for right now? So wouldn't it be true that, uh, let me just do it like this. Wouldn't it be true then that x plus x plus 40 equals 360, right? That'll tell me what the measure of each of those are, guys. So we can do that. That's 2x plus 40 equals 360. 2x equals 1, sorry, 2, no, wrong, 2x equals 
Uh, subtracting the 40 gives me 320, and divided by 2 gives me 160 degrees. In each of these guys, this one and this one, is going to be 60 degrees. Let me do some erasing here. Let's make sure we know what these are. This is 160 degrees. And this is 160 degrees. So now, right now, I'm just finding a bunch of a uh, bunch of information, guys. But really, um, I haven't found really what I'm looking for just yet. Now it is getting me closer to it, but I have not found it just yet. Okay. So, what do I have to do? Well, I'm looking for the measure of angle y. Now, guys, angle y is right here. Let me do some erasing here so you guys can see it. Angle y is this one here. And here, I am looking for this angle right here. So the question is, well, what is that? What is the measure of that angle? Okay, well, let's do a little bit of work, guys. Let's go ahead and try to figure this out. So, let me do some erasing here. Let's say I do cut this off right here. Guys. Let's say I make this line right here, right there. Now think about it for a second, guys. Think about it very carefully, okay? Wouldn't that mean that this whole thing is 180? Okay, that whole thing is 180. Well, I have more than 180. I actually have 160 and 40. I actually have 200 total. So I have actually 20 extra, okay? That 20 extra is this piece right here, guys. This piece right here is 20. Uh, 20 degrees. Okay. Now, if that's 20 degrees, guys, now carefully, this is the angle I was looking for. So, sorry about that, guys. I had to pause the video for a second. I was getting a phone call, but let's go ahead and continue, guys. So, I did find that last missing piece right there, guys. That was 20 degrees. Now, think about that, guys. That angle Y is an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is always half of the intercepted arc. So this angle right here has to be 10 degrees. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and try the next one. Let's go ahead and do C. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing here just so I can have more space. Uh, but again, guys, it's it's really, and before I even go any further, guys, it's a matter of really stopping for a second and analyzing what you have. And by that, what I mean is like something like this, guys, not a lot of people might get caught up with the fact that this has tangent right away. Um, I can tell you what I think of right away. I think of this. I'm like, wait a minute, that's 100 degrees. This is 200 degrees. Before I even know what they're asking me for, I'm starting to make some conclusions here. I'm like, okay, that's 100, that's 200. Well, that means the last missing piece here, the last piece of the full circle, has to be what? Well, 360 minus 100 minus 200. That gives me 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees right there. Okay. Now, let me actually not go too far ahead, but at least like get your brain thinking like that. Like, what can I figure out right away? But now it's always a good idea, and I always tell you this: have one eye on the final answer. Like, what are you actually looking for? And here they told us to find the measure of the the angle with the with it has a labeled sorry that is labeled as a letter. So here I'm looking for the measure of angle. V. Now, even here, I keep thinking, I'm like, okay, wait, that's an angle that's outside of the circle, guys. So, what do I need for that? Well, here's the angle. Draw it out, extend it out, guys. All right? That's an angle outside. Well, we have a formula for that, guys. We said that the measure of an, an angle that's outside of the circle is going to be big arc minus little arc divided by 2. The measure of angle V is big arc. Well, Look at the two that it trapped inside, guys. A hundred and sixty. Which one is the small, or sorry, the big one? That would be one hundred. Which one is the small one? That would be sixty. And that has to get divided by two. So the measure of angle V is going to be, let's see, that's forty. Forty divided by two is twenty degrees. Measure of angle V has to be twenty degrees. Okay? All right, next one. Let's see. So you are given, let's see, you're given that this angle, and maybe it was a little, 
confusing to see you guys, but this angle they're telling me is 150 degrees. Well, just like I said earlier, start making some conclusions here, guys. That means that this is 30. Okay? The measure of that angle right there, and actually maybe let me draw it right here. The measure of this angle right here is 30 degrees. Why? Because they're supplementary, guys. This tangent line makes a straight line. Right? 150 plus 30 is 180, which it should be because it's a straight line. Now, where to go from here? Well, if you don't know where to go to next, guys, remember, have one eye on the final answer. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the measure of angle W here. Okay, what would that be? Well, first thing I'm going to do is trace out the angle. Now, if I only knew what the heck this arc was, then I can figure that out easily. But the problem is I don't know yet. But you do have some clues here, guys. And here are the clues. This chord is congruent to this chord. Ah, there's some clues within the diagram, guys. So why is that important? Here's why. Ready? Check this out. This is the intercepted arc of this angle. Okay? The angle was 30 degrees. Well, what do we know about a tangent chord angle, guys? We know that the measure, whoops, right there. The measure of the angle is going to be one half of the intercepted arc. Or you could write it like this the intercepted arc has to be double the size of whatever the angle is. So double the size of 30 would mean that that purple arc here is actually 60 degrees. And I'm going back to another theorem that we talked about, guys. I said it not too long ago, actually. If you have two congruent chords, which we do, look at them in blue. If we have two congruent chords, then the two corresponding arcs, then the two corresponding arcs are congruent. What does that mean? That means that this is also 60 degrees right here. And why would that be helpful? Well, that's because if this is the intercepted arc, 60 degrees of this inscribed angle, we take half of that to find the measure of angle W, which in this case would be 30 degrees. Okay? All right, let's move on, guys. So hopefully those made a little bit more sense. Let's go on to a few more. And as we progress on here, we'll keep getting a little more help from them. But I think, I think uh, we're doing all right. So let's keep going. So this next one. Uh, the measure of angle AFE. AFE is 89. So this is 89 degrees right here. Uh, the measure of angle C is 15 degrees. Uh, fine. AE and find BD. And I think I already see where the, the trouble came here, guys, because here's the thing. We have two types of angles here. This is an angle that is outside of the circle. This is an angle that is inside of the circle, but not a central angle. Now, for both of those, I need two things. A big arc and a little arc. Well, the problem is, guys, we don't know either of them. I know it's this one and this one, right, to find the measure of this angle. But we don't have either of them. And actually, think of it, it's also this angle and this angle to figure out this angle, 15, because look. That's the two pieces of arc this giant angle is trapping inside. So we're using the exact same two arcs, guys, to figure out both of those angles. So what do we have to do? Well, if we don't know something, guys, that's the reason why we learn algebra. We have the ability to use variables. So let's go ahead and call this, uh, and I may have switched this the first time around that I did it, but I'm going to go ahead and call this x. Let's call this y. Now, why would I do that, guys? Well, let's concentrate for a second here. How did I find the measure of an angle that's inside of the circle? We have a formula for that. Here it is. The measure of that angle has to be equal to big arc plus, important guys, if it's inside, it's plus, 
little r divided by 2. Well, I have all the information I need, guys. Here it is. We know the measure of the angle. It's 89. We know what the big arc is. Well, not really, but we know that we called it x. We know what the little arc is. Again, not really, but we called it y. And we divide by 2. Okay, well, what the heck do I do with that? Well, let's, let's at least uh, get the x and y by itself. I don't know. So let's get rid of this 2 by multiplying both sides by 2. It gives me 1. Uh, let's see. Let's multiply that out. 89 times 9 times 2, 178. That was right. Okay. So 178 equals x plus y. Now, guys, it doesn't really matter here. You're just trying to find one of the variables. Let me just go ahead and solve for x. Why not? So I'm going to get rid of the y. Get rid of the y. I get x equals negative y plus 178. Okay. Now, that didn't really lead me anywhere because I. That doesn't tell me anything. I haven't found any of the angles. However, guys, it tells you more than you know, and here's why. Because you're setting up a system here. Because the, it turns out that the exact same two arcs are going to get used to find the measure of this angle out here. We have a formula for that, too. The measure of the angle on the outside would be equal to the big arc minus the little arc this time. Yeah, this is different. Minus the little arc, and then divided by 2. So, we have all that information. Measure of the angle is actually 15. What's the measure of the big arc? Well, we don't know it yet, but we called it x. What's the measure of the little arc? Well, we don't know it yet, but we called it y. So, what do we do here? Well, we do exactly what we did earlier. Whoops, sorry, not times x. My fault. Multiply by 2, guys. Get rid of that denominator of 2. So, multiply both sides by 2. What is that going to give me? That's going to give me 30 equals x minus y. Again, guys, it's a good idea to solve for x. Now, why would that be a good idea, guys? Well, because, check it out. Look at what I have. Okay? If x equals this, but x also equals that, well, guys, these are the same thing. So what did that mean? These are the same thing? So can't I set up negative y plus 178 equals 30 plus y? I can, and I should be able to do that. So let's go ahead and add over this negative y. I'm going to add it over to the other side. That gives me 178 equals 30 plus 2y. Get rid of the 30, so 148 equals 2y. Divide by 2, I get 124. So 100. And 24. Um, hmm, I feel like I did something wrong here. Oh, sorry. I did something wrong. Wow, that's horrible. Now 124. I don't know what I'm doing. 74. I was going to say that doesn't seem quite right. That sounds a little bit more like it. Okay, so the measure of y is actually 1. Oh, I almost did it again. It is 74 degrees. Okay, 74 degrees. And if you want, guys, at this point, since you know what. The y is, you could actually substitute that back in here. Oh, sorry. You can substitute that back in here and find out what the measure of x is. Okay. But in this case, guys, they are only asking me for... Oh, actually, no. I lied. They asked me for both. So the measure of b was my y. We told you guys that was 74. So I do need to find a e. Let's go ahead and do that. So I said I can substitute in my y in here, so let me just use this equation. And it doesn't matter, guys. You could have totally substituted it in there. It does not matter. Watch what happens. We get x equals 30 plus y, which is 74. So x equals 100. I messed that up. 100. I'm getting ahead of myself. 104. So 104 degrees. 104 degrees and guys it takes two seconds check it how did i get 15 well big arc 104 minus little arc so 104 minus 74 is 30 divided by 2 and hey look at that that's 15 okay does not take very long to check that guys so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense now and i believe there's only one more i'm gonna go ahead and do this next one it is number 30 
let's go through number 30. Find the area... Actually, you guys asked for B and C, so let's go for B and C. Find the area of the shaded region to the nearest tenth. Here's the shaded region, guys. That's a sector. We have a formula for the area of the sector. So sector area is central angle over 360 times pi r squared. We have all the, all the information we need. Okay? So this is going to be sector area equal. Central angle, well guys, check it out. This was 270. What does that mean? That means that this is 90. So 90 over 360 times pi r squared. Okay. We go ahead and multiply that out. It says to round it to the nearest tenth. Let's do that. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and multiply it out in our calculators. So 90 divided by 360 times pi uh, ten pi times pi squared 19.63 uh, let's see yeah 19.63 but they want it to the nearest 10 so uh, the sector area here is going to be 19 point Six, uh, we're talking about centimeters, not squeeze, centimeters squared. Okay, for area is always squared. Uh, and then the next one says find the length of PR to the nearest tenth. Well, guys, for arc length, this just changes a little bit. For arc length, still central angle over 360, but now it's times pi r. So we got to change the formula a little bit, but pretty much the same thing uh, here. So arc length. Is going to be 90 over 360 times 2 times pi times 5. So let's try that one more time. 90 over 360 times 2 times pi times r. 7.85. Arc length. 7. Uh, what did I say again? 7.85, so 7.9 approximately. Okay. Oh, wait. Never mind. Yeah, 7.9. Okay. Arc length is 7.9, and then just don't forget, guys, we are talking about centimeters here. So don't forget to include that at the end. All right. Um, let's see. I think. I think that's it guys for 10.5 so let me pause the video for a second guys and let me pull up two more questions that you guys had on 10 point uh 10.6 and 10.7 so 10.5 is completely done let's go ahead and move on to that next one okay guys this is the question that somebody asked for 10.6 uh, somebody in period eight asked for 10.6 uh question number 16 uh this is on page 483. So the question says circles O and C are tangent at X. A, C, and C, E. Uh, A, C, and C, E are tangent to P. So this and this, both of these segments are tangent to circle P. And I realize it's a little hard to see there, guys. So here's F, here's B. Okay, uh, cool. And then it says, uh, da, 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 da. They're tangent at B and D, which makes sense. B and D right here. Those are the two tangent uh, points. Points of, of tangency there. So it says, if DFB, so the arc length, if DFB is 223, uh, find the measure of AE. So I'm looking for the measure of this out here. Well, how am I going to get there? Well, unfortunately, I don't have anything about that bigger circle O. Now, what you could do, though, is if you look closely, guys, just work with what you know. One of the things that you know, or hopefully you know, and if not, here's here it is. Guys, you actually know what the measure of BD is, arc BD. The measure of arc BD has to be what? The measure of arc BD has to be 360 minus 223. Let's do that. 
360 minus 2.3. That's 137. So BD is 137 degrees. Now, why is that helpful, guys? Well, it's helpful for this reason. If you guys remember our previous lesson, actually, it would have been from this lesson, from 10.6, the measure of the arc, oh, sorry, the measure of the angle, this angle here, okay, compared to the measure of the minor arc, these two here that I have highlighted in green, guys, these are supplementary, okay? Those have to be supplementary. What does that mean? Well, that means that if this arc here was 137, that means that the measure of this angle has to be 180 minus 137, or 43 degrees okay 43 degrees now don't believe me okay forget about this circle for a second guys pretend the circle's not even here you just focus on that little circle right here okay well think about it can't i find the measure of this exterior angle right here by doing big arc minus little arc divided by two i challenge you guys to go ahead and try that and i guarantee you you're still gonna get 47 degrees. So for now, let's go ahead and say that that is 47 degrees. Or, yeah, sorry, 47, 43. So, okay, so what? Well, guys, this is why that's important. Check this out. Now focus on the big circle. Forget about the little circle. Forget about everything else except for that big circle and this inscribed angle. Okay? The inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc, the piece of arc that you want, this piece right here. So what is the measure of arc AB? It's going to be double the size of 43, so in this case, 86 degrees. And that is how you find the answer for problem number 60, okay? There was one more problem, guys. I believe that was on 10.7. Let me go ahead and tackle that, and then we will move on from there. All right, guys, this is our last problem for today. Um, now, on this one, unfortunately, you guys asked me for how to do part D, uh, but I really can't do part D unless I do pretty much the whole problem. So let's go ahead and do it, guys. It's, not, it's no biggie. It's going to be fine. So here's what I know. I'm looking for the measure of angle C. Now, if you look closely, guys, this is a par sorry, not a parallelogram. This is a quadrilateral. And what do we know about a quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle? We know that opposite angles are supplementary. So if angle A is 110, that means angle C has to be 70 degrees. Okay, let's do some labeling here, guys. This is 70 degrees. Uh, let's see, part B, it's asking for what is the measure of arc BC? Okay. Well. Um, I don't know yet, but we can figure it out. And here's how we're going to figure it out, guys. Well, here's what I'm looking at. I'm paying attention to this. The fact that actually these two cords are completely congruent. Well, if two cords are congruent, guys, then their corresponding arcs are congruent. These two have to be the same. Arc BC, BC has to be congruent to arc CD, okay? They have to be congruent. Why? Because the chords are congruent. Well, how is that helpful, guys? Well, it's helpful because of this. Check this out. The last piece to complete this circle would be this giant circle, or sorry, this giant arc, my bad, this giant arc BD. Now, could I figure that out? Could I figure out what BD is? Well, I can. This is an inscribed angle, guys. It's 70 degrees. So, that means my intercepted arc is double that. So, this is 140 degrees. That arc right there, arc B, D, is 140 degrees. Well, how does that help me with B, C, and arc, or, and arc C, D? Well, guys, it helps me because these two better be the same. I know that they're the same, so why can't I just call them both X? So let's do that. X plus X plus 140. Well, what does this whole thing add up to be? It says to be 360. So let's go ahead and finish this up. It's going to be 2x plus 140 equals 360. Subtract over the 140. You're going to get 2x equals 120. 
for an answer of 60 degrees. Okay, uh, actually, that doesn't sound right. Let me think about it one more time. No, I keep making mistakes over and over again today, guys. Sorry about that. I should use my calculator. There we go. That sounds a little better. One time. Okay, let's go ahead and label that as such. So let me do some erasing here, guys. There's no longer X. It is now 110 and 110. Okay, so the measure of arc BC is 110 degrees, which again, guys, makes sense because 140 plus 110 is 110. That's the full circle. That's 360 degrees. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's see, the measure of angle B. Okay. Well, let's see. Kind of like earlier when I was comparing these two angles, guys, we said that those were two opposite angles of a quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle. Well, this is no different. These are also two angles, two opposite angles of a quadrilateral that are inscribed in a circle. So actually, those have to be supplementary as well. So 180 minus 95 has to be 85 degrees, okay? Now, almost done. The last part is probably gonna be the hardest part, but that's fine. Let's see if we can figure it out. The question is, uh, what is the measure of arc AB? Hmm, what is the measure of arc AB? Well, let's see. Um, okay, let's see if we can try this out. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So, the one thing I'm noticing here is that even though I can't directly find what AB is, just like this piece right here right now, I can take kind of a different route to get that. And here's that route I'm going to take, guys. One of the angles that does trap a piece of that is this angle right here. Check this out. This angle right there, it kind of traps AB inside, but it traps more than AB. It traps also BC. But what I can do with that information, guys, is this. Well, this is an inscribed angle. Shouldn't this be double the size of that inscribed angle? So this is actually all 190 degrees. Well, how is that helpful? Well, guys, it's helpful because now look. 190 minus the 110 I already had here will give me the remaining piece that I wanted. So 190 minus 110 will give me 80 degrees. And that is how we find the measure of arc AB. Okay, guys. So a little bit longer of a video, but I think uh, it's a good thing because actually I was able to answer every single one of the questions that you guys marked down on that Google Doc. So uh, overall, guys, thank you for giving me that feedback. I'm glad you guys are trying things out. And keep them coming, guys. Let me know. Uh, I know these are not the greatest circumstances, but I'm going to do my best to, um, to, to get those questions answered for you and to give you guys a little bit more detail on how to find all of that in order for you guys to stay current with Chapter 10. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and I will see you guys on the next one.